Hi, this is Kelly Borsheim again. Welcome back to my painting of Lollipop and I'm showing you the process that I'm using on this particular painting. Okay, so since I've seen you last, um, I've worked a lot on the drawing, which I hope that you can tell, and um, I ended up changing the figure a lot because I'm making relationships. The more relationships that I make, the more accurate my figure is going to be as far as proportion and things. So let me tell you some of the things that I did to change this up a bit. Uh, first I ended up making his head larger so that it fits the fact that he's a child and I want to have that feeling of youth so I need the large head in relative to the rib cage and the hip cage. Uh, hip cage. Um, okay, so I did that. I lowered the shoulder a wee bit. Um, I've been, uh, I lowered this leg back here now this you can see it looks it fits better here you don't see the knee but this is too much of a, of a curve what I'm doing is ex putting them in the rock and roll that I like and I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing the quad muscles but this leg is extended and it's not being actively used and so this is a ridiculous thing when I add the paint in I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out a bit I wanted this little gap in here which you can see with this negative shape um, because I didn't like the point of the elbow hitting intersection exactly here. So I'm keeping some of this. But while I was doing my drawing, I'm looking at negative shapes because I see this little sh shape here easier than I see a subtly taper tapering cylinder of the leg. I'm looking at this shape of this V, this little victory, but also I'm blocking in this and I can kind of see this weird little shape so that I get the relationship of this to this. And that was another thing, I had to move his head over a little bit closer here for that. So, and I'm looking at this negative shape. I'm looking at this little negative shape between the rock the, and the body. And I'm not really look, thinking of them as items. I'm telling you them as items because it's easier for us to communicate that way. But when I'm looking, I'm only thinking of this as a shape. I'm not thinking of what it is or why it's there. I'm just thinking I've got to cut into this shape this way. So I've made all of these relationships and right now I'm fairly happy. I know from experience that once I start applying paint on, I'll be continually redrawing, redrawing and recorrecting because um, this is a good thing, thing but um, we tend to see like in volumes. I don't know if you can see the grapes in the painting that uh, Max did in the back, but it's... Um, we, we don't see grapes as an outline of shapes. We actually see them as a volume. So this is a good start for me because even though it's not volume, it's not masses, it would be nice if I would do darks and lights and do the, the patterns right now in a no-tan design. But um, it's easier right now for me to kind of try to get my proportions right and then I have fewer lines to erase, fewer. If I had shaded in what's shadow and what's the way closer to maybe how our brain would decide this is foreground, this is background, this is this, and this is that. Um, I have less to erase and, and change and do that. Um, some painters like to go ahead and do the tone painting and then add color, and, and I've done that too, and it's quite fun. The problem with me is I tend to get stuck in, I really love the monochrome, and I find it really romantic to have the sepia or the black and white and I'm trying to push myself into color. So on this project, I'm gonna to try to use a lighter high key palette like Joaquim Sorolla, and, is that Joaquim? I'm so bad on names. Anyway, Soroya, who's uh, got the museum in uh, Madrid, and I really like his color palette, and I like his, uh, his uh, families at the beach, the naturalness of a lot of his scenes. Anyway, um, so to get back to this, I'm looking now that I've done the basic drawing, and I was thinking about this as I was drawing things and changing as I went, but I have a round canvas this time, okay? Get my little blocks here. And what I like, uh, this round shape, and I have a lollipop, that's the subject right now, it's the title, maybe it will always be the title, maybe I'll change it. But I have a round here and a round here. If I look at how I've designed the rocks here, they also have a curving shape. So I have a curve going here with the center of the circle is way down below us. Then I have an alternating curve up here with his body. Do you see that? And then here what I've got is things that are breaking up the shapes in little mismatched ways. So I don't have the negative shape here. It's not circular. You're going to see more triangles 
and everything in the body here is pretty much triangles, okay? I can make a triangle out of almost everything and do, you know, this and this. And these are all relationships that I had, that I made to help me figure out exactly where the body goes. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take my eraser and get rid of a lot of these extraneous lines that I use to help me navigate my way into the shape. Once it's clean, I can stand back again and look at the pure outline of these things that I'm trying to design, making the leaves a little rounder here and there, just putting in some curves and offsetting, making these a little round. Because it, the fact is, I'm not making a copy of a photograph, I'm actually designing a painting, and I need the painting to work as a design. So. Um, Anyway, this is kind of a new area for me, but I'm trying to get more and more consciously thinking about the shapes of things, the color palettes and how they work, and so I'll, you're going to ride along with me as I work this stuff out, which I hopefully do. Thank you, and see you when I've got a clean canvas. Ciao, ciao.